<laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Loz and I'm coming to you from my lab in Nam, Melbourne. And just like you, I am drowning in plastic. Luckily, Planet Art, Sam for Change from Samsara Eco and me are here to tell you why and maybe even how we can get out of this mess. In the world of tomorrow, plastics will certainly call the tune. Plastics are changing the appearance of our everyday world. The science has given us some fabulous things. Plastic. 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 What are plastics? Did you know plastic was actually invented to save the environment and spare precious wildlife? For example, we were experiencing mass deforestation because of our use of paper in paper bags, and we were using things like ivory from elephants and rhinoceros trunks to make combs and other items we used every day. Wait, let me get my friend Haley from Planet Art to help us out. Haley, can you give us a hand here? Happy to help, Dr. Loz. Hi everyone, I'm Haley from Planet Art. Synthetic plastic was made back in 1907 by Belgian chemist Leo Beckland. Plastic seems like a fantastic idea at the time and was a great solution for some of the issues we were having. It's durable, valuable and can take almost any form. It really was the next big thing. At the time, our culture was really good at reusing. For example, our milk bottles were made from glass. When you were finished with them, the milkman would pick them up, take them away to be sterilised and they'd be used again and again and again. That's pretty great, huh? But over the century, our relationships with materials changed, and not for the better. Companies started promoting and producing single-use plastics, and before we knew it, we were using way too much plastic. Unlike other materials, plastic never really breaks down. It breaks up into tiny pieces. Once made, it's here on Earth pretty much forever. Thanks, Hayley. See you later. Now, for those of you who don't know, when we talk about single-use plastic, we mean plastic we use once and then we throw it away. For example, think about glad wrap, balloons, Christmas decorations, and Halloween props. Although plastic is sometimes very handy and even necessary, as Hayley mentioned before, plastic doesn't break down, it just breaks up. Even if we throw it in the bin, if it goes to landfill, it stays around forever. And that's because plastic is not biodegradable. It's human made. Let me explain what plastic's actually made of. You might have heard of natural resources. These are resources used to make other materials. For example, sand to make glass or even wood to make paper. But what do you reckon plastic is made from? Let me give you a clue. We get it from under the ground. Uh, we use it in our cars. Any ideas? I'll tell you. Plastic is made from fossil fuels or oil, which is a finite resource. We can't keep using it forever and it's not great for the environment. Oil is pumped up from underground, even sometimes under the ocean floors. Oil is then transported and refined into ethane and propane, and then it gets treated and it becomes ethylene and propylene, and then we combine these molecules together to make a thing called a polymer, kind of like this. <laughs> Basically, plastic is bad for the environment on two levels. Firstly, the process of making plastic from fossil fuels is not great for the environment. And then secondly, when we use plastic and discard it, we pollute the environment further. But there are things we can do to help like recycling. One of the ways we traditionally recycle plastic is to melt it and then remold it into something new. But we can only do this a few times. But one of the new technologies is enzymatic recycling, which means we can recycle infinitely. With enzymatic recycling, we break the polymers down into monomers. And we can do this again and again and again and again and again. But more about that later. This is Charlie. He's going to be assisting me today. Do you know what recycling is, Charlie? Is it A, using something once and throwing it away? B, using something, putting it in the correct bin or place to be taken away, broken down and reprocessed into something else? C, using something then reusing it for a new purpose? Or D, 
using something, then putting it in the compost bin to break down in the soil. So, which one do you think it is? I think it's B. Yeah, B. A lot of people actually confuse recycling and reusing. The difference is that recycling is breaking materials down and then making something new again from those materials. Can't we just recycle and never make new plastic again? Good question. The thing is, it's really important to recycle, but the current recycling processes don't work very well. We actually only downcycle, which means the plastics can only be used a few times before they're considered useless. Plastic bottle, Charlie. It's made from fossil fuels. And if we chop it up into smaller pieces, like that, and then keep chopping, we can make it into smaller and smaller pieces and then we can melt it. And that means that then we can turn it into something new. The problem is that eventually this plastic and the things that we make again become less and less strong. So the industries can't use it anymore. And then we've got to make new plastic from fossil fuels again. That's not good for the environment. Nope. Although it's a great idea and it's better than nothing, it's not going to solve our big issues. Hey, just jumping in here really quickly to remind you that recycling is still a really important part of living sustainably. So remember to sort out your recycling and pop it into your curbside bin loosely. Not everything can go in that bin, so make sure you check out recyclingbu.com.au for information on how to recycle some of those trippy items in your area. That's right, Hayley. We need to keep up our good habits because we've got some good news. Some clever people are working on a new way of recycling, a form of recycling that can be done infinitely. And this is our favorite bit. This is where the science comes in. So now we've learned a little bit about the history of plastic, the problems it's created, the issues with our current recycling. I think it's time to find some solutions. For this, I'm gonna call my friend, Vanessa from Samsara Eco. Hi, Dr. Loz. Hi Vanessa, we've been talking about plastic and some of the issues we have with our current recycling system. We wanted to talk to you because we know you legends have come up with some really good solutions. Hey, can you hold this for me? We call ourselves one leg of the table of change. It's important that we reduce, reuse, redesign and recycle. And we're the last leg of that table. And by recycle, I don't mean downcycle. I mean actually recycle infinitely. Our hope is that with our technology, we never need to make new plastic from fossil fuels ever again. So what about your recycling process is so different? Well, we have gone back to nature and found our solution in enzymes. Our plastic eating enzymes can break plastics down to their core chemical building blocks so we can stop this down cycling. With our infinite recycling technology, we can stop producing new plastic from fossil fuels and start cleaning up and using all the plastic we already have. Enzymes, ah, I know something about that. Thanks, Vanessa. No problem, bye. Enzymes are absolutely fascinating. They are in every cell in your body. We use enzymes to make bread, we use enzymes to make yogurt. Basically, enzymes are molecules called proteins. I'm gonna show you an experiment that you can do at home or at school that demonstrates how enzymes work. So, what have we got, Charlie? We've got a pineapple. Okay, we've got a pineapple and? Some gummy bears. Gummy bears. We're going to use this pineapple to make these gummy bears disappear. In pineapple is a group of enzymes called bromelains and they break down gelatin, which is the main ingredient of a gummy bear. So we're going to set up a little experiment. We're going to have a gummy bear that nothing happens to. We're going to put some gummy bears in pineapple juice. We'll put some gummy bears in water. We might even put some gummy bears in vinegar to show you that it's not the acid from the pineapple breaking it down. And we'll see what happens to these gummy bears overnight and how the enzymes in pineapple change these gummy bears. You ready? We're gonna take a wedge of pineapple and we need to get the juice out. You can simply squeeze it with your hand or you can juice your pineapple. We've just chucked a bit in the blender. The core actually, the bit that we don't eat, has the most enzymes. So it's good to cut your pineapple, eat the good bits, and then you can experiment with the leftover bits. All right, can we pour this in here? We've got to get the juice out of the blended pineapple. Pour it in. As I said, if you want to, you can just squeeze the pineapple like that and get out some extra juice. 
Charlie, can we pop one gummy bear, or maybe two, let's put two in okay. each Petri dish. That way we've always got a comparison. So we have our first one, that's gonna have water. Can you tip a little bit of water in there for me, please, Charlie? What do you think is gonna happen? What did we say they would get? Oh, that's our hypothesis. In this one, we're gonna tip some water, but the water has some salt in it. Okay. So what do you think might happen if we use salt water instead of getting bigger? Might go, might go a tiny bit bigger. Let's see. Many of you have heard of the gummy bear experiment where you are checking to see if the gummy bears grow bigger by osmosis. And you've probably done it where the gummy bears don't change in the salt water. So we want to compare that. All right. And then because we're doing an alteration to a traditional experiment, we're going to do one with pineapple juice and we're going to compare to the vinegar. So we're talking about enzymes breaking down gelatin and pineapple is very acidic. And I want to show you just to rule out that it's not the acid in the pineapple that's breaking down, that it's actually the enzyme. All right, and then pineapple juice in our last one, please help her. Okay. Yep. So you're gonna let that sit for about 24 hours, come back tomorrow and see what's happened. I did it yesterday. Hey, oh wow. Ready? Look at this. Look at this, Charlie. The vinegar's made it grow a bit. Yeah. What's then happened to the water? Water made them huge, huge. and um, the water's gone down a bit. Mm. And the vinegar water's done the same. But the pineapple juice is tiny. Where have and they the gone? Vinegar's, the vinegar is just grown a bit. Pretty much the same. So this is because the enzymes in the pineapple juice break down what these gummy bears are made from. And that's all that's left. If we left that for another 24 hours, they would be completely gone. That's how enzymes work. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and the vinegar's made it grow a bit, so it's not the vinegar that's made it take out. It's definitely not the vinegar. And definitely not. What are the things called? Uh, en enzymes. Enzymes. So we've used gummy bears here, because I know they've got gelatin in them. There are other lollies that have gelatin. What else could we try? Um, gummy snakes, maybe gummy frogs. Whole lot of stuff. So it's up to you. You're the scientist do the experimenting. And in the lesson plan with Sam, Sara, Eco and Planet Ark, there's another experiment you can try. Phew, that was quite a journey. We've learnt about the history of plastic, We've learned about the good intentions of the past, but we've learned about the difficulty of our current plastic reality. We've learned the difference between recycling and downcycling. We've learned that clever people are working on exciting solutions like enzymatic recycling. But above all, we've learned that it's important that we do our bit at home as well. If we all put our clever heads together and continue to reduce, reuse, redesign and recycle, then we can truly fight for change. The scientist has something to offer to the public which is far, far more than gadgets and inventions. Happy National Recycling Week, everyone. Want to dig a little deeper on the topic? Then head over to Planet Ark's Schools Recycle Right page and stand for change to find a new lesson plan. We can't wait for you to get involved.